Okay, this time around we're going to look at some common errors in predicate logic, and one real biggie. I would say the error we're going to be talking about here is about 50% of the problems I see on the last test in my class. Same here. Now, if I can get students to avoid this one problem in predicate logic, they're avoiding half the problems they could possibly cause. It's, it's an easy mistake to yeah. make. It's very common. We want, to, we want to point it out. And by the way, because these are out of sequence, yeah. let's mention where we are. So we're back in Cromwell Park at Shoreline. It's still raining. We are in Seattle. Yeah. Actually, we're just north of Seattle. Yeah, this is the last week of May in Seattle, and it's pouring down rain. So we're doing this, this for you. If this were Tallahassee, it'd be sunny. Yeah. So the common mistake is is what? Well, okay. Um, some folks, when they see the, a quantifier, they think, ah, let's take it off using UI uh, for this or EI for that. The thing is, if you're going to take remove quantifiers using universal generalization instantiation or, or universal instantiation or existential instantiation it only works on main operators yeah. so if I wanted to I could do UI on this line remove that quantifier because this is the main operator of this line the big mistake is sometimes people will try to take this off just kind of leaving everything else as is we can't do UI right now on this we cannot do EI right now on that uh, Maybe we can do a modus ponens on line one, or an implication, modus or a modus tollens. But we cannot remove these quantifiers unless the quantifier is the main operator. Right. And let me, to emphasize this, you can only apply an instantiation rule if the universal or the existential quantifier is at the beginning of the line and its scope is the whole line. Another way of saying it, yeah. Another way. Of, so the scope of this quantifier, do you have a red pen on you? Mark has all the pens. I have a red pen. Oh, good. So the scope of this quantifier starts here and goes to there and stops, doesn't it? And then the scope of this quantifier starts here and goes to there and stops. So this quantifier's scope is not the whole line. Right. And therefore, we cannot apply universal instantiation to that. But that's, that is the most common mistake people make, is they try to break this down as it is using instantiation. You can't touch it. So really, we can't touch this. Our only hope is this. Yeah. But yeah. this isn't connecting, so what are no. you going to do? Yeah. We don't even have to take the quantifiers off in this particular problem. Yeah. The thing to notice here is we can do a quantifier exchange on this, QE, uh. and that will give me the negation of this, which in turn lets me do a modus tollens. So in your mind, you're thinking, I can flip this over to the EX, I can flip this over, I'll get the opposite of that. And then move forward from there. Yeah. So let's do a QE on line two. Okay. So applying QE, remember that you... Quantifier exchange, you, cha you trade quantifiers, so we swap out one quantifier for the other. We're going to trade a universal for an existential. And then when there's only one tilde, basically Q essentially QE says flip that tilde over to the other side. That's one way to put it. Everything else remains unchanged. Okay. So that's QE. We traded quantifiers, we flip the tilde over. That'd be QE2. Okay. And the reason I did this is I saw in my mind that if I could get this, I would get the negation of this, allowing me to do a modus tollens, which uh -huh. would give me the negation of the antecedent tilde universal x of x. So you're seeing this as a P horseshoe a Q, and this is the negation of the Q. So you're going to want to do a negation of the P. That's what you're doing. Yeah. So let's do a modus tollens. Our, our videographer is so bored that he's <laughs> looking the other way. <laughs> this is fine. One of these times we're going to get our videographer in here to do a proof. Or something. He's we been, learned all our logic from him. He's been very helpful. Yeah. Uh, so P horseshoe Q, negative of the Q, bring down the negative of the P. So you want me to do that? Sure. And we might ask why, again, it's there. If I see a modus tollens, I'm going to do it. If I see a modus ponens, I'm going to do it. It'll almost surely be useful. So that's modus tollens on one, one and three. three. All right. Okay. And, and that gives us this. It turned out to be useful. I'm getting closer to the conclusion. I've got an FX. I've got a tilde floating around. And what I'm noticing is, is if I do a QE on this, I get my conclusion. Yeah. So you're thinking in your mind, if you, if you flip this by QE, it's going to be that. And that's why... They look alike. A little, little workout. So let's do a QE on line four. Okay, so we swap out the universal for the existential. 
And then we take that tilde and flip her over. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's QE that's on three, four. four. And, and that's, the, that's the conclusion. And so we've matched done. the conclusion, yeah. so we're, our proof is yeah. completed. It wasn't a hard proof. It used a lot of QE, and I suppose that's a good review. But again, you can't take a quantifier off unless that quantifier is, um, affects the entire statement, whereas the main operator Yes. Will. And let's take a look at something else, just as long as we're on this theme, this riff. Hmm? This is a logic riff, kind logic of, riff. I guess you could call it that. Since we're on this riff, another common mistake in predicate logic is you, we have a universal quantification here, but, but it's negated. Mm -hmm. And what do students often want to do when they're not clear on the rules? But what do they want to do to that often? I can imagine some trying to do UI yes. to take that off. To me, for me, that's been the most common really? mistake. A lot of students want to apply UI directly to this and instantiate it right down. And, what, and oftentimes when they do, I'll put it in red. Okay. So red means it's a mistake. A lot of times what students will do is they'll apply UI to this, even though it starts with the tilde, and they'll bring down it, this part, and they'll put the tilde there, like that. Yeah. And we'll draw Mr. Yuck here. That's a tongue sticking out. It looks like a pierced tongue. Well, no, that's meant to be that thing in the, you know oh, how, okay. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Anyway, this is not allowed. Why can't I instantiate this and bring it down like that? Again, the universal quantifier is not the main operator. What's so the main operator? It. It's the tilde. This yeah. is actually a negation. Yeah. You can't do UI on a negation. You can right. only do UI on universal statements. Yes. So in other words, I can only do UI if it starts with a universal quantifier. If it starts with a negated quantifier, I cannot yeah. do UI. You could do a QE on this. Yes. And that would get the tilde over here, and then you could do a EI yeah, on it. Yeah, I could. You can't do UI right now. Can't apply UI if it starts with the tilde. So these are some of the common mistakes. Uh, Mark is right. If I did a quantifier exchange on this, I would swap the universal for the existential, flip the tilde over, and it, now it is an existential quantification. I could apply an existential uh, instantiation to it. Okay. but. I can't do anything when it starts with the tilde. I mean, I can't instantiate when it right. starts with the tilde. So, yep. is there anything else you want to add to that? Yep. Looks good for now. Okay. Got some comments.